goodness. I want to, if you would, uh, turn with me uh, to the book of Genesis chapter 45, the verse number. Uh, you to turn there, if you would, the verse number uh, three through eight in Genesis 45. And I want to read those verses uh, for you. It says, And Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph, does my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near uh, to me, I pray you. And they came near. And he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom ye sold uh, into Egypt. Now, therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that you sold me hither, for God did send me before you to preserve life. For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in the which there shall neither be earring nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you that sent me hither, but God. And he had made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. I want to encourage you from this theme, standing in the pitfalls of life. And the pitfall that we focus on tonight is the pitfall of purpose. It's the pitfall of a purpose, that God has a uh, purpose to do a work in our lives. The challenge we have is how will we handle aligning with the purpose that God has set for each of our lives. As our heads are bowed tonight, God, we love you and thank you for your presence and God for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for sending your word tonight with power and with demonstration. I pray that you would touch hearts, God, all around this circle tonight, cause hearts to be open hands to be opened so that heaven is then opened 
to pour into our lives what's essential that we might fulfill the purpose that you've set for each of us. God, we believe that no weapon formed against us will be able to prosper. And God, we rest assured that what you started in us, you're able to complete it. God, do it in this place and in the lives of the believers right now. We come tonight against the hand of the enemy. And Lord, we cast the devil out. We command him to take his hands off who belongs to you. And God, we celebrate you right now and declare that victory is ours. <laughs> and we put our hands together, Lord, and we celebrate you for it now. And declare by faith it's done in Jesus' name. And every believer say, thank God. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We uh, certainly honor the Lord tonight. Uh, I'm excited as we uh, listen, pour through the specifics that God has given concerning uh, Joseph's life, and you all realize we're not just talking about the life of Joseph, we're talking about all of our lives, because each one of us, I think it's interesting that each of us has a purpose, amen? There's not one person that's on the planet that does not have a purpose for their life, uh, but it is, in fact, a challenge in the lives of believers as we move toward fulfillment of the purpose that God has sent uh, and set for each life that's uh, listen, in uh, the body of Christ, in the kingdom of God, and even every life that's on the face of the planet. Uh, there are several things that I would mention to you. First and foremost, uh, the fact that there is not one person that's been created that was not created with a purpose. There's no person that's been made that was not made with a purpose. And the thing that, that gives us uh, confirmation of that particular truth is the fact that everything that you see that's made is made for a specific purpose. Nothing is just made randomly. Nothing is just made uh, sort of uh, as a, a passing fad in essence, but everything that is made, uh, it is made for a purpose. The time may not be elongated uh, within which that thing is used, but every, crea every creation is created for a purpose, and every one of us has a purpose, and we want each of us to understand that and to know that. You're not just here roaming the earth for the purpose of watch biding the time or just passing time away, but every person has a purpose, and God's desire is that every person connects with the purpose for which he created them. That's a powerful challenge that everybody has because most people assert I am my own person, that I'm going to do what I want to do, but understand you have a purpose, and no one can fulfill your purpose but you. You can't leave it to someone else, and God will hold you accountable by how you uh, embrace and then mat uh, matriculate through life, uh, fulfilling the purpose, the assignment, specific assignment that God has for your life. And this may be one of the, the last installments that I share with you concerning uh, the, uh, the life of Joseph, but I, I think that it answers a question that many people have, uh, and that's the question uh, that deals with uh, the, what is the purpose that I have? How do I accomplish what God wants uh, for my life? And what are the things I must do? What are the attributes I must uh, demonstrate uh, in order to see God's purpose fulfilled in my life. There are many pitfalls that we face in the process uh, of moving toward, watch this, the, 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 the destiny after having received the dream that God has given to us uh, so that we can fulfill our destiny that God has set for each one of our lives. There are many pitfalls we said you're going to face. Remember the pitfalls we talked about. The one pitfall is a pitfall of pride. You can become enamored by the fact that God has so favored you that he gave you a purpose. But what you must understand from tonight, and that is every person has a purpose. Amen? And if it's not pride, if that's not a pitfall, another pitfall we talked about was the enemy's presence. When uh, Joseph's brothers threw him into the pit, that is when enemies come against you, it, it, it causes you to make a decision whether or not I'm going to continue to pursue my purpose uh, because we might resolve it's just not worth that. 
you might resolve that, listen, I didn't come here for the purpose of going through or matriculating through all the challenges that life offers. I want to essentially stand on easy street. I'm going to pursue things that are more comfortable, not necessarily those things that are more, uh, watch this, uh, uh, complementary of what God has set for our life. And so the challenges that enemies bring uh, can serve as a pitfall to your accomplishing the destiny that God has set for your life. And then remember that once Joseph got through that, there was another challenge uh, that he faced, a pitfall that he faced, and that was a pitfall of how he would steward over what was not his. And we've got to understand that as we're going through life, often the challenges that we face can Im not, if it doesn't uh, better us, it can embitter us. But we want to maintain a good heart and be a good steward over what belongs to someone else. Joseph was sold into slavery, ended up in Potiphar's house who bought him from the slave block. And now he is in charge of Potiphar's house, but he doesn't own the house. He doesn't own anything in the house. He's stewarding over what belongs to someone else. And Joseph was faithful in his stewardship. I challenge every person. A pitfall is, uh, is this. Whenever you are not walking in at any given moment your destiny, you may well be a part of helping to push someone else toward fulfillment of their destiny. You got to rest assured that while it may not seem like you're doing something essential at that moment, it is a powerful stepping stone toward fulfilling what God has set for your life. Don't believe that, listen, that preparation uh, is lost time. Preparation is never time that you waste. It is essential for the character building, the building blocks that, listen, stands to uh, propel us toward fulfillment of what God has sent us in the earth to accomplish. Next thing uh, is this. When you uh, have done, he left Potiphar's house stewarding over what belonged to another man uh, to being placed in prison. That's uh, the pitfall of doing the right thing and getting uh, ending up in the wrong place. The pitfall of doing the right thing and ending up in the wrong place. And this is what happened to Joseph. He did the right thing. He uh, refused the advances by Potiphar's wife, but he ended up in jail. And he spent 13 years in prison. And so, we listen, you got to maintain a good heart. In spite of what happens to you, I think this is so powerful. In spite of what happens to you, you got to maintain a good heart. <clears throat> because you know that God is doing something in your life. No matter what happens, what you see transpire, if you believe God <clears throat> is taking you someplace, you're never uh, overwhelmed by the stuff that happens along the way. Does that make sense to everyone in here? Next thing is believing the word of God. That is the test of, listen, the challenges of what the word of God says relative to what you see around you. You got to always believe and trust in the word of God. You got to believe what he said in spite of what you see. That's the pitfall that we face. Many people uh, just quit and fall by the wayside in, on their road to their destiny because they become disillusioned uh, at doing the right thing, become disillusioned at what they see as manifestation that God's doing something mighty and something great in their life. They are quick. But the Bible says don't ever be weary in doing well. He says, because in the season that I have appointed, he says, you're going to reap if you just don't give up. The next thing uh, that we say is a pitfall uh, is when you are promoted and you come all of a sudden and say, watch this. Joseph spent 13 years in prison. He went to bed one night in jail, woke up the next day and would listen and was assigned, uh, listen, to the palace. Joseph went to sleep a mere prisoner. But over, uh, listen, the prisoners in the prison woke up the next day and he's now been promoted to the second most powerful man on the planet. And that's how quick God can turn your situation. Somebody ought to celebrate a little bit because you know God can turn your situation, listen, expeditiously. God is the one that determines seasons 
Listen, the calendar doesn't determine it. God determines it. The Bible says, listen, <coughs> in St. In, in Saint John chapter 7, it says, listen, Jesus said, my season is not yet. But he told us, your season is always. It just means you got to always watch for the transformation to come and believe that the transformation is coming in your life. You got to be someone, listen, that rest assured that because God is for you, then you can rest assured that God can turn the situation that you face right now, listen, in an expedient manner. Next thing is uh, not only uh, the, the power uh, challenge, but also the prosperity challenge. We said that when God move in your life, you got to be someone, listen, that don't allow the prosperity that God will bring into your life to change your heart. It's essential that we maintain a good heart all through the process toward walking in fulfillment of our destiny. You got to be someone that's able to handle the good things that God is doing in your life. The Bible said when Israel grew fat, she kicked. That she backed up. Y'all know some folk, as soon as things start to turn, they start to turn. But the Bible says in Luke 9, 62, he, he said this. He said, woe be, he said, if you put your hands to the plow and look back, the Bible says you're not fit for the kingdom. That means we place more confidence and commitment to the giver and not the gift. We are more enamored and connected to the giver. We are after God's heart and not God's hand. And so prosperity is not something that, listen, <clears throat> will uh, cause our focus uh, to be uh, diffused, but it is something that, listen, we will embrace as a tool to promote, watch this, the, the destiny that God has set for our life. Last thing uh, that you see Joseph is working his way to as we read the text we're reading today, but we've already discussed this, uh, is the test of forgiveness. Is when you learn to pardon those that have done crazy stuff to your life. If you don't forgive, you can short circuit, you can circumvent your destiny fulfillment. If you don't learn to forgive, you can short circuit, you can forfeit accomplishing your destiny in the earth is what the word of God declares over our life. And so all these are pitfalls. We like to believe, listen, we've got to learn to treat our neighbors the same way God treats us. If God has, been in a, has forgiven us abundantly, we ought to be willing to abundantly forgive those that have wronged us. But we feel like we owe, listen, uh, this to the person that we are refusing to forgive. We feel like the person deserves to not be forgiven. Then what makes us deserving if our neighbor is undeserving? We are no truer to God than your neighbor was to you. You have to learn to forgive. So these are the pitfalls that we face. And the last one is the pitfall of the purpose that God has set for our life. God has set a specific place that he wants us and the specific purpose which he made us, and God wants us to embrace it. Listen to what the words, and this is one of the most, I say, desired of all the messages regarding, uh, listen, uh, the standing in the pitfalls of life. And the reason why is because most people can really relate to, uh, uh, to this. Uh, the interest is how do I get, uh, listen, from the dream phase of my life to the destination phase of my life. How do I get there after facing all of these pitfalls? You know, folk desire that. I know I'm going to go through some stuff, but I want to know ultimately how do I get to fulfilling my destiny? And y'all know folk love uh, dealing with what's happening in the future. How do I get <laughs> to, to my future? And, and I want to know, Deacon, how, and not, first of all, what is my future? That's why you're calling up the psychic lines in California. Try to get somebody to tell you what that future is. If you haven't had a dream, you want somebody to give you a dream. Amen. But the challenge of the pitfall here is found in, in, in the quandary regarding how do I get, listen, uh, to my purpose or how do I get to my destiny while facing the pitfall? And this is the challenge. What is my attitude 
listen, or my commitment regarding how I get to the place that's been set for my life. What is my attitude concerning how do I get to the place that's been set for my life? The question of the pitfall is whether or not I'm willing huh, to do, the listen, the things, listen, it takes to get there. The question or the pitfall is, am I willing to do what it takes to get there? How are you going to be standing at a fork in the road? And listen, one leads to destiny fulfillment. One leads to momentary pleasure. And so the question, the quandary is, what, listen, choice do I make? Listen, whether it's a destiny choice or whether it's just a distraction choice. Is it propelling me toward God's this and desire, or is it only fulfilling my temporary and present desire? God has a desire for us. God says, my desire is to prosper you and to bring you, he says, to an expected end. Do our choices this and propel us toward what God has set for us, or are we prone more? Listen, in this pitfall. And the challenge has been throughout the course of this lesson. Listen, what do we do when faced with the challenges that comes as we endeavor to fulfill the purpose God has set for us? I'm almost done for the night. The problem we have in front of us, listen, is more, uh, listen, uh, is, is this, that it, it is more of us. It takes more and requires more from us. So most of the time we refuse to commit more. To get to our destiny, watch it, it requires more and it takes more from us. The problem we have in front of us, listen, is more, it takes more and requires more from us. So most of the time we refuse to commit, listen, to the more that's required to achieve what God wants for our life. Sometimes most of us get to the point where we, uh, what we call peter out. What that means is we've reached a breaking point. We've reached a boiling point. And we simply said it don't take us. Just remember, what did Joseph have said, listen, the night before he was promoted to the kingdom, I've had enough. He'd already plotted, uh, Brother Morgan, a, a, a prison break. He said, now I had enough of this. They're not going to use me like this. I'm down here taking care of these prisoners. I have no business even being here. What if he had made that choice? But rather, the Bible records, Joseph had a good heart. He was there interpreting dreams for individuals. He was there speaking life to those that had sad countenances in prison. What's wrong with you guys? Huh? Have you lost your best friend? Do you know the God that I know? I'm talking about the same God he trusted in that now he's ended up in prison, and not just for a week, but for 13 years he ends up there trusting the God of the Bible. And he's telling others, listen, while he's in jail, and mind you again, he's been there for a long time, but he's still telling folk, you ought to trust the God, <laughs> this is that I serve. Luke 12, 48, I'm telling y'all, the problem is that we have in front of us is that it takes more. Listen, and it requires more from us. Because we must listen. Most of the time, we refuse to commit to doing the more that it takes to accomplish what God is destined for our life. Luke chapter 12, verse 48, <coughs> uh, verse 47 and 48, it reads this. It says, and that servant, and I put 47 there just so you can get some, uh, the, the contextual <coughs> understanding of, of, of this word. You've heard this verse of scripture before. He says in verse 47, Luke 12, and that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to, to the will of uh, his, listen, uh, of his master. The Bible says that person shall be beaten with many stripes. And then he goes on to say, but he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. And then he says, for unto whomsoever much is given, it says to him shall much be required. But we refuse to do the much. We refuse to do the more to accomplish God's destiny and God's purpose for our life. And the Bible says, "In whom men have committed much, of him they will ask more. Of whom men has committed much. 
if God's given you great gifts, God's going to require a great re listen, response from you. If God has blessed you abundantly financially, God's going to require great stuff from you. If God has blessed you intellectually, he's going to require a lot from you. To whom much is given, much is required. What he's saying to us, listen, whom I poured, listen, the, the wealth into, whether it's, listen, intellectual wealth. Huh? Whether it's, listen, referential wealth, huh? or whether or not it's financial wealth. He says, to whom I've given much, I'm going to ask for much. But you got to study this verse. Let me read it to you one more time. It says, and the servant which knew the Lord's will. And he's also saying, when I've given you understanding, I require more, watch this, uh, commitment, and I'm going to say this performance from you. When you understand more, you should do more. Amen? You don't take the, listen, the intellect that God's understanding God's given to you and then use it to try to outsmart God. Huh? But the Lord said, and read what it says. It said, the servant which knew the Lord's will. That meant I've gotten, I receive a rainbow every time I come to church, but I'm doing the same stuff I've always done. It says, he that knew the will, the Lord's will. And he, listen, but then prepare himself. <clears throat> it says, neither did this person do according to the, uh, listen, to the will of God. He said, that person's going to be beat down by God. That's what the word says. It said, listen, but the person that didn't, didn't know much. <laughs> the Bible didn't say he's going to escape a beating because there's no excuse for ignorance because you've been taught. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. You've been, listen, you've been raised in a generation of word that's been poured into your spirit, been sitting in church for years. You've been watching church on, uh, listen, social media and on uh, television networks for years. And it's not that you were just sitting in front of the television, but God was speaking to you. And the Bible says, listen, but he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes, he's going to be beaten, but he's going to be beaten with few stripes. Didn't say you're going to avoid, listen, a judgment. It says it's not going to be as severe as one who knows more. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? For unto whomsoever much is given, the Lord said, I'm going to require a whole bunch from him. Remember, the quandary is found in these questions. Listen to the question. The question is, will you learn, listen, what your purpose is? Are we concerned? Are we interested? Are we uh, compelled to pursue our purpose in the earth? Are we compelled to pursue the purpose that God has for us? Or have we established interests and desires that we're pursuing apart from what God has destined for each one of us? Second question is, will you listen? Will you do what your purpose is? Once you have found the purpose, will you listen, make a choice to go sideways versus standing in the purpose and fulfilling that purpose for God? There are many people that know that God has given them an assignment in the body of Christ. But they made a purpose for intentional and conscious decision not to walk in fulfillment of that purpose. So will you do your purpose? And then compare that to what Joseph, listen, did in the illustration we have before us now in Genesis 37 through chapter 50. The Bible says, secondly, listen, will you fulfill your purpose? Will you stay in it long enough? Will you, listen, uh, experience the challenges and the pitfalls that are inevitable as you become a destiny-seeking individual, huh? Will you allow those pitfalls to, listen, to sidetrack you, to distract you? Or will you, listen, declare, if God be for me, he's more than anything that will ever be against me. The fourth thing, last thing, will you be faithful to the purpose that God has called you to? That's powerful. Will you be faithful to the purpose that I said that God has called you to? Not the purpose that you have fabricated and concocted because it suits your, your fancy. But will you be faithful to the purpose God has called you? And you got to know that whenever you know your purpose, you're not about to let anyone talk you out of or stepping down from the purpose for which God has assigned your life. That's why Nehemiah, when his friends rolled around, said, hey, Nehemiah, can you come out to play? He said, no, I'm too busy doing a work for the law. <laughs> And he said that I can't come down. We got to be willing to tell some folk, listen, I'm busy. 
That's why you can't let folk roll up on you and, and invite you out of church, invite you out of your assignment. You got to invite them in. You got to tell them, no, I'm too busy doing, listen, eternal work. Why you want me, listen, uh, to, to, to shrink back and to watch this to dumb down and, and emerge myself into something that has no eternal Listen, value to it. You got to declare that, listen, God has set me on a course and no devil in hell will be allowed to stop me from walking in fulfillment of what God has purposed for my life. There are keys that God just showed uh, to me that, listen, deal with discovering and fulfilling the purpose that God has for each one of us. Note that, watch this, that at the outset of the text, uh, you got to remember it's been now nine years that Joseph has been in power. Nine years, seven years of plenty, and now two years into the famine is where we find ourselves in the outset of the text. Joseph has been ruling uh, in Egypt now for nine years. There's been, as I said, two years uh, in the text that famine has been in the land, and seven years of plenty has been experienced. It's clear when you read the text that we read, listen, uh, that Joseph has now come into an understanding of, listen, and finally has clarity and reason God gave him, listen, the dream that God gave to him. Joseph knows what's going on now. Joseph is now not only, watch this, uh, in his destiny, but he is fulfilling his destiny. He knows what the dream is about. It's about more than just ring uh, streak. Cows and, and cats. He says it's more than just listen the stars that he saw and, and, and listen and other images bowing down to the stars. He said, I get it now. He said, I want, and let me explain to you all. Listen, what God was doing in my life. This is how Joseph is coming across to them. He's saying, I understand God. Think about how powerful it is to know why God has set you in the earth. God has set him in the earth. He declares at certain times it's so clear. When you read that, but Joseph not only understands his purpose, but he is articulating his purpose uh, to his brothers in the text that we read. Joseph said, listen, y'all, this is what happened. Y'all thought y'all were bad. Now, he didn't come across all like that. But, but you know, Joseph said, what you all did, <laughs> huh? you did it for bad. But Joseph said, but God intended it for good. God was in control all along. Now, that's powerful if I don't preach anymore tonight. You better know that God, listen, he told them God is in control of this. Let me read that to you again. It said, Joseph said to his brethren, I'm Joseph. Does my father yet live? And his brothers could not answer him, but they were troubled at his presence. He said, Joseph, look, we, I thought we whacked you years. But look at Joseph. Joseph said to his brother, said, come near to me, I pray you, please come. He said, they came near, and he said, I'm Joseph, your brother. I'm the guy you sold into slavery. You remember me, Joseph. I'm back. Listen, he's, he's, he's testifying to them, and, listen, and, 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 and not trying to terrorize them, but I would imagine they must have been somewhat terrified to hear that this is our brother who we cast lots to turn with, we're going to kill. We want to kill him. Let me move on. It says, now, therefore, it says, don't be grieved, brothers. Don't be angry with yourselves that you sold me down here. It says, but God, you didn't just, you didn't even send me down here. It said, listen, I understand it now. I got it. He said, God sent me down here. <laughs> he said, God sent me before you were to come so I can keep you alive. That's what he told him in verse number five. Do you see that? He said, listen, now, therefore, don't be grieved. Don't be angry with yourselves that, that you sold me down here. He said, but God sent me here. So you, you thought you were in control, but I'm just going to tell you today, God is in control. Isn't it powerful for us to know that when you're pursuing destiny, when you're pursuing God's purpose for your life, God... Uh, <laughs> God's always in control. He's always in control. And God had a purpose, Joseph said, for my life. And Joseph said, I stayed faithful to that purpose. And Joseph said, as a matter of fact, he says, this is the purpose for my life. Joseph understood, and he was fulfilling God's purpose 
for his life. He says, and this is what we have on the table for tonight. It's powerful when you know God is always in control. Y'all know what it looks like when you know that God's in control? That means, listen, when you go outside tonight and your tire after church is flat, you don't kick the tire. You say God's in control. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You don't say, you, you, you don't get attitude and, and start calling folk, and who put me in this car to begin with? Huh? If you believe God is in control, then listen, it transforms the way you approach the pitfalls that you face in your life. Huh? Why? Because God is in control of this. God is in control. I think there's a song that says God is in control of my life. God is in control. Huh? Can we make it more than a song and make it a part of, listen, the, the, the wisdom that help us to fulfill our destiny when we believe that God is really in control, that God is really driving this thing, that is God, listen, that is pushing us toward fulfillment of our destiny. Uh-huh. You got to know that. And watch this, y'all. It doesn't matter, uh, Deacon, what happens in our lives. We don't sit down, uh, listen, uh, on our seats of discouragement, listen, and put our uh, faces in the cups of our hands and start singing, nobody knows the trouble I've seen, huh? But we're the ones that declare, if God be for me, he's more than all the world that will ever be against me. You got to know that if God is in control, then you realize that no matter what I face, I'm convinced that, listen, that he that has begun a good work in me, he shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I got to know that God's coming out no matter what problems I might encounter in my life. I got to realize that, listen, God is moving in my behalf. And I know I'm on my way somewhere. Isn't that something though, that can cause our hearts to be turned? When we know that God is in control. First point, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to close even before we uh, conclude that you got to, if you're going to fulfill your purpose, listen, you got to ask some questions. How can I understand my purpose? How can I discover my purpose? And how can I fulfill God's purpose for my life? How can I understand it? How can I discover it? And how? Listen, can I, listen, fulfill God's purpose for my life? First point is you got to believe, first of all, that you have a purpose. And when you know you have a purpose, listen, uh, there's so many things that we could bring to the podium for, listen, right about now. Listen, to ascertain that you have a purpose in your life. I told y'all that nothing that's created is created without a purpose. My God, you can just look around you every waking moment of your life. Look around you and declare the purpose that everything has. This thing here has a purpose of protecting the glasses that I'm wearing. Pick up anything. Look at anything. It has a purpose. Every creation has a purpose. I know some of us probably don't understand this. Every plant has a purpose. Every watch this. Every animal has a purpose. Now, I don't know the purpose for bugs, but, but every bug... See, they have the right name. They bug us. Maybe that's their purpose. But every creation has a purpose, and we have a purpose. The Lord told us that in the Word of God. He speaks it clearly to us, and this is how he unfolds. And listen, the very first and foremost thing, listen, we've got to know is that we've got to believe that God created us with a purpose in mind. Listen, that, listen, that many people believe that we, listen, we have an overall purpose. But not many people believe we have an individual purpose. Many people believe that the church has a purpose. But my part in the church is not really significant. Many people believe, well, the church is designed to do this great big vision for God. But as individuals, we just step in and out as, as we will. Uh -huh. But I'm going to tell you, that's not what the Bible says about who you are. It's not what the Bible says about what you're to do in your connection, listen, in the body of Christ. I was talking with someone earlier today, but look at what the Bible, let me just stick with this so we can get out of here. The Bible clearly says that, watch this, we are the body of Christ. Amen? I'm enamored by the fact that God, watch this, he created our bodies. 
And one of the characteristics of our bodies is that our bodies have the power to heal itself. That God, through his omniscience, huh, he wired into our bodies. He made our bodies. It's such a powerful, powerful, this is a mechanism that God has put in us. He made our skin to heal over time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God has so wired us that he said, listen, when you get sick, I've created armies in your body to come to the rescue whenever there's challenges going on. The white blood cell armies will rush to the rescue and stop the madness that's going on in your body. God did this. Listen, but watch this, y'all. It's not just in this body, but he did it also in the body of Christ. And so he says it's not that just is this physical body, but he said, I've given you illustration in your physical body, and I want you to matriculate that. Uh huh. To understanding what happens in the body of Christ. That's a good time for folk that's on this is social media to just look at yourself and declare, I have a purpose. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians, I'm closing, 1 Corinthians 12 12, for as the body is one and has many members. The Bible says all the members of that one body, being many, or one body, and he said, so also is Christ. And you got to know that every member of our body, even our physical bodies, have a purpose. And listen, and it's interesting to know, uh, listen, I've talked to folk that have problems with their feet. And man, you know they like to wear shoes that may not be the right size, but they sure look good. And some people love them so much, listen, they've even made a decision, I don't mind having that little toe cut off. So I can enjoy the shoes that I want to wear. But listen, but I, I learned that the principal focus and purpose of the little toe, this is it's the established equilibrium of our whole bodies. And so if you, you maybe look good, but you'll be falling down every other step of the way. Listen, that may be the time to invest in red bottom because the bottoms may be up more often. You don't hear what I'm saying. So it says, listen, you can't. Listen, you can't determine the value, listen, of the member by the size of the member. You better know that the Lord said all of us are important to him. And we got to know that, listen, if we're important to God, we ought to be important to everyone else on the face of the planet. And when others don't appreciate your value, you just got to, listen, attribute it to the fact that they don't know who your father is. Uh Uh-huh, you got to know that, listen, because you belong to God, you're not going to let anyone downplay a short circuit. Uh, My God, the value that you bring to the table, it's time for everybody to declare, I'm somebody in God. You got to know the Lord said that everybody and everything has a purpose. He said, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, to everything, he said, there is a season. And to everything, he said, there's a time and a purpose under heaven. That means you got to understand that in your life, God has given you a purpose under heaven. That means it's not just to go to heaven, but you have a purpose under heaven. While you own the earth, you better know God is wired a purpose in your life. If you embrace it right now, you can walk in fulfillment of what God has in store for your life. You got to be someone that declares, I'm not going to shrink back. I'm not going to cower down. I'm going to stand on the purpose that God has set for my life. The Bible said there is a time. There is a season for everything. A time to be born. A time to die. God said I've wired seasons for every person's life. And we've got to embrace tonight that God has given me a purpose and I'm going to walk in his fulfillment no matter what comes or what goes. Can somebody declare I know God has created me for a reason. I'm going to pursue that reason. I'm going to establish it in my life. And I'm going to see it manifested by the power of God. And then you 
got to rest assured that because God has set you in the earth with a specific purpose, listen, to fulfill here in the earth, you better know no devil in hell has the power to stop it nor to short circuit your season because the word declared, the Lord said in Isaiah 55 in verse number 11, it says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. He said it will not return void, but he said it's going to prosper in the thing where in two I've sent it. I dare you put your hand on your person and say this is where the word of God has come into the earth is in my heart. I'm going to walk it out. I'm going to talk it out. I'm going to praise it out. I'm going to clap it out. I'm going to shout it out. I'm going to let God have his way in my life. The Bible says as the rain comes down from heaven and it does not return without watering the earth. Uh, he said, that's the way my word's going to be. Uh, I dare you put your hand on your person uh, and say, when God started, uh, God's going to complete it. Uh, that's what the Bible declared uh, in Philippians 1 and 6. Uh, he that has begun uh, a good work in us, uh, he shall perform it uh, until the day of Jesus Christ. Uh, I dare you wave your hand uh, and shout, God uh, is doing a great work uh, in my life uh, and I'm glad uh, he's doing it in me uh, I know the devil said uh, I wasn't worth much uh, I know he said uh, I wouldn't accomplish much uh, I know he said uh, I'm worthless uh, I know he said uh, I'm purposeless uh, I know he said uh, I'm not coming up uh, and I'm not coming out uh, but I came tonight uh, to serve notice on the devil uh, I am uh, what God said uh, that I am. Uh, I'm God's child. Uh, I'm God's property. Uh, I'm God's purpose. Uh, I'm God's anointed. Uh, I dare somebody shout. Uh, I may be the little toe, uh, but I come to declare uh, I'm the one uh, that God has called uh, for such a time uh, as this. Uh, can somebody shout yes? Uh, come on and shout yes. Uh, Tell the Lord, yes, give him glory uh, in this place. Uh, come on and magnify uh, and glorify the name uh, of the Lord in this house. Uh, he's worthy uh, to be glorified. Uh, he's worthy uh, to be magnified. Uh, there's no God uh, like our God. Uh, is there anybody uh, that don't mind praising him? Uh, I dare you lift your hand uh, and celebrate God. Uh, even right now, uh, in the midst of this pandemic, uh, I know I serve God as bigger than uh, my God the virus. Uh, he's bigger uh, than any problem uh, I'll ever face in my life. Uh, that's why I don't mind uh, in the midst of all the struggle, uh, in the midst of all the calamity, uh, in the midst of all the craziness. Uh, I will lift my hand uh, and give God praise. Uh, he's worthy uh, to be glorified. Uh, come on and celebrate him. He's worthy uh, right now. Uh, come on, put those anointed hands together and shout, I thank God uh, I have a purpose. Come on and praise him all over this. He's worthy. He's worthy. Come on, put your hand on your brother and say, I'm worth something to God. Come on, say, I'm a critical to the body of Christ. Come on, shout, I'm essential. I know the governor might have told you that your job may not be essential, but I dare you tell the governor that God said, I am essential. Huh? Come on, wave your hand huh? if you know you're essential. Huh? If you know God said, huh? I need you uh, in the body of Christ uh, fulfilling your purpose uh, and your assignment for me. Uh, come on and wave your essential hands uh, and shout, God, uh, I'm reporting for duty. Uh, I'm going to do what you say. Uh, I'm going to serve. Uh, I'm going to pray. Uh, I'm going to witness. Uh, I 
want your name uh, to be glorified uh, in my life. Uh, come on and shout I am uh, what God says uh, that I am. Uh, put those essential hands together and glorify the God of the Bible. Uh, he's worthy. Yes, he is. Glory to God. Listen, y'all, as our heads are bowed, as our eyes are closed, we've got to get out of here. We celebrate the name of the Lord. Listen, we don't want, listen, the pitfall of purpose to become a challenge that stops us from walking in fulfillment of our destiny. God has empowered, has graced, given us his ability. And there's nothing that the enemy can do to stop what God has purpose to do in and through our life. I thank God for those that have made a choice that, listen, I belong to God. I've been called by God, anointed by God for service. And I'm going to serve in spite of the enemy's ploys. I'm going to serve in spite of the enemy's, my God, diabolical plans to come against me. The Bible said if God be for you, he's more than all the world that can ever come against you. I'll share with you more. Listen, if the Lord says the same on tomorrow, specific things the Lord has given us. Listen, to walk in fulfillment of his purpose and his destiny for each one of us. There's nobody that can do us like God. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed, our hearts are open. Listen, if you're in this circle tonight and you don't know the Lord, maybe tonight, listen, you feel the compulsion. I want to know my destiny. First, listen, purpose you have is submit your heart, your life to the Lord. And let God save you. Let him become your savior. And the thing that I share to the saints often, listening to those that God gives me an opportunity to declare the word to, salvation, God wants to be your savior first. But he, listen, equally as important, he wants to be your Lord. He not only wants to be saved, but he wants to be Lord. That means that once you're saved, listen, salvation means you surrender your will to the will of God. He doesn't just want to be your savior. He wants to be your Lord. Because he wants you to be the light that shines in the midst of darkness. And watch the darkness. Listen, that, listen, that does not supersede, it does not overpower the light. Let the light of God's goodness shine in and through our lives. And that God would be glorified. We praise the name of the Lord and we give him glory right now. If you're making a choice tonight to be saved, I want you to pray this prayer with me and pray it earnestly. There are others around this circle. I want to encourage you just to lift your hands and say to the Lord, I need you in my life. I've tried for so long to do it without your help, without your leading, without your guiding. But tonight, God, I know that I can't make it without you. Tonight, I yield to you and ask you to be my Lord. I've walked with you for a while as my Savior. But tonight, God, thank you for giving me understanding. But I now want you to be Lord. I'm re ready and willing, God, to follow you in fulfillment of my purpose. And we believe it's done, and we thank you now. As your heads are bowed and eyes are closed, come on, every heart is open. Any person in this circle also that's saying to the Lord, God, I've been a person that's tried to mold and to listen, determine uh, of my own intellect, my own destiny but tonight God I know that you are Lord that you are the leader you are the guider you are the way maker the door opener and God I bow to you now in Jesus name come on pray with me this prayer if you want to give your life to the Lord accept him as Savior you want to give your life to the Lord pray this prayer with me earnestly dear God I confess tonight that I'm a sinner that I've done things that are unworthy of a child of God. God, I ask you tonight to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. God, I pray your word in, in Romans 10, verse 9 and 10, that if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then now I'm saved. Thank you, Father, for coming into my heart, making me new, making me whole, making me clean. By the blood of Jesus Christ, I accept it, receive it, and I believe it. And I thank you now that it's done. And I give you the praise in Jesus' name. Thank God that I'm saved 
to the glory of God. Come on and put your hands together and thank God for those that prayed that prayer earnestly and have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and his Savior. <clears throat> and God, today we thank you for the choice that these powerful individuals have made. I pray now for those that's in this circle tonight that have their hearts lifted, their hands lifted, and God as heaven is now, oh God, opening to them. God, whatever the need, you know, God, that you are the solution. You are the problem solver. I pray that you would lose health, God, in this circle tonight. Touch, heal, deliver now. God, look on those that, God, may be suffering from COVID-19. Not only those that are infected, but God, I pray for those that have been affected. God, thank you that so many, so many collateral uh, individuals have experienced problems because of the presence of the pandemic in the earth. But God, tonight I thank you that you're lifting hearts and spirits. You're giving us new perspective and new understanding that God, no matter what we face in our lives, we can still, God, stand with the confidence that if you're for us, you're more than anything that will ever be against us. God, I come against the hand of the enemy right now and to let him know and serve notice on him that his diabolical plot, his plan, God, to thwart what you've unleashed in my life, it cannot be stopped and the enemy is defeated by the power and authority of the blood. God, I lose health in this circle tonight. God, every system, every organ shall align with your word. I speak it and by faith I declare that it's already done. And I celebrate you for it in Jesus' name. I speak to financial conditions, economic circumstances, that God, even wayward children, and God, despondent relationships, and God, even a despondent marriages. I come against the enemy now, and God declare that unity shall stand up in every home. God, let your name be glorified in every relationship that peace may abide by the power of the Holy Ghost. Do it because you're God and we give you the glory and give you the praise and believe right now that God has already done. And we put our hands together all over this circle, even those in this house, and we magnify the name of the Lord Jesus Christ because we believe that victory belongs to us right now. Come on and celebrate him if you believe it. Come on and magnify him if you know that it's already done. We magnify God. We give him praise in the name of Jesus. Come on and thank God and glorify him now. We thank God for the presence of the Lord. Listen, all over this place and for those that made the choice to give their life to the Lord, we want to celebrate the Lord for you. Listen, if you would give us a call if you were saved tonight. Uh, listen, uh, call us at 704-391-0365 or send us a note on social media. Let us know your name, the city and state that you hail from. And remind us and help us to celebrate with you of the powerful choice you made tonight. We're excited. Heaven is rejoicing. And guess what? New Bethel is rejoicing as a body. Listen, as well, we thank God for you and we celebrate the Lord for the powerful choice that you made. I want to encourage every person tonight to be givers. Every person. Listen, we are enjoying the opportunity to sow through touchless means tonight as we gather, as we assemble together on social media. We want you to be givers. Listen, whenever you give, you really demonstrate to God that, listen, you can trust him, that you believe in him. God made us to believe him. I want you to reach out tonight, to stretch out by faith and to believe God. We're at the presence of a new year. It's a time where we said, listen, new and bring a new, acquire new understanding and apply in a new way the understanding that God has given to us concerning sowing and reaping, concerning giving and receiving, and then believing God as a tither and as a giver. I want to challenge you to trust God tonight as a giver. For the word of God says that whenever you give, it will be given unto you good measure. The Bible says in the word of God that whenever we give, he will cause all grace to abound toward us. And we believe God to do it all over social media. I want you to listen, to, to sow. You can sow by multiple means. Listen, if you're going to uh, give, uh, listen, by Givelify, you can uh, uh, access uh, our giving uh, mechanism on Givelify, or you can simply mail your gifts into the church. But either 
uh, option that you use, whether it's mailing gifts into the church or whether or not it's using Givelify, I want you to use this address. The address is New Bethel Church of God in Christ, 1520 Little Rock Road in Charlotte, North Carolina. The zip is 28214. If you're mailing your gifts into the church or whether or not you're using Givelify to give tonight, the address you want to use is New Bethel Church of God in Christ, 1520 Little Rock Road in Charlotte, North Carolina. The zip is 28214. I know that if you give, the Lord will do you good. You can also give on our website. The web address is www.newbethelchurch.com. The web address again is www.newbethelchurch.com. Search for e-giving uh, on the website. You can share your gifts with us there. Again, search for e-giving and you can share your gifts with us there. I believe tonight that, listen, faith is standing, listen, strong, and doubt is being assailed. As you bow your heads all around this circle tonight, God, we thank you for your word that declared that, God, if we give it, be given unto us good measure. Press down, shaking together, running over, shall men give unto our bosom. Thank you for your word, God, that declared that whenever we are givers, that you will cause all grace to abound toward us. That we will always have all sufficiency in all things. And you said we will abound to every good work. God, we believe it and we speak it over this, this and this people tonight. And by faith, God, we declare that it's done. We give you the praise in Jesus' name. And every believer say, thank God. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. God bless you tonight. Thank you for your liberal giving. We celebrate the Lord for you and thank God for you tonight. May God bless you. Listen, don't forget to tune in. Uh, listen, those that are joining us on social media, tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock a.m. And then I say to uh, all the New Bethel that's listening and joining us tonight, don't forget the uh, in-person service tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. We invite you to come, and not only for you to come, but we invite you to invite someone else to come join you. I believe there's a word that God has in store for our life, and you don't want to miss it. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. As always, our prayer. Listen, don't forget the consecration started on last night at 5 o'clock. Uh, we're praying Monday, Wednesday, and Friday in person here on Wednesday and Friday night. We're praying here in person. We want you to join together with us in this powerful consecration. I believe it would change your life if you do it. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. As always, I pray.